In this video, we're going to be showcasing some real-world requests in reference to third-party applications. So if you're not aware, Salesforce has thousands of third-party applications, whether that's e-signature tools, uh, PDF or document composer tools, uh, things to make administrative life easier, end-user life easier, marketing automation tools. There are so many different things. All you have to do is head over to the App Exchange to see all of the third-party applications that you could or should be aware of. Now, there are thousands, like I mentioned, so you're never going to know them all. And for that reason, as a Salesforce expert, you should always be aware that you're going to continually be learning. You're going to continually uh, have to understand these tools. New ones will come out. Changes will take place. You don't have to be an expert, but you need to be comfortable learning them and understanding how to use them for your clients. Now, third-party app tips. So always use a sandbox. Put these apps in a sandbox. That way you don't give permissions to people who shouldn't have them. You don't accidentally install something into Salesforce that updates page layouts or it gives people permissions they shouldn't have uh, or anything in between. It can just cause absolute confusion. Uh, so just make sure you're always doing this in a sandbox until you know the app works the way you want it to. It's designed the way you want it to be and you're ready for it to go to your end users in production. Always let your users know that a new application is coming that they need to be aware of. If it's not going to impact them, then of course you don't need to let them know. But if you expect them to actually use it and not just be confused by seeing it, you're gonna need to let them know that it's coming and that what the purpose of it is and those kind of things. So be ready for change management with these apps. All right, so we're gonna jump into some actual requests. So this is uh, Tenfold is a company that has a Cisco connector. If you're not aware, Cisco is uh, a very commonly used uh, telephony, so a telephone system uh, for companies. So it's, you know, it records the calls, it's their work phone um, that they use. And it's usually those big phones you see sitting on the desk and they pick it up or they might have an earpiece or whatever, but it's basically your work phone that sits right there on the, on the desk with you. And, this is a company that integrates that phone directly into Salesforce so that you can click to call, you can record calls in Salesforce, it automatically logs tasks and things like that. So quick overview there. Now, this is the kind of request you might see. Uh, so I talked to Tenfold today for the Cisco connector. It sounds really great. Here's a recorded demo video. They can also schedule a live demo if we feel the need for that. Pricing is paid annually. Here's what the pricing is. Free unlimited support as needed. So these are all the things you sort of are going to see. And it's, I don't know about this third party app. I don't know what to do, but you have to be open minded to saying like, okay, you need to go do a little research around tenfold, watch the demo, see how it works. Um, you need to be the one sort of doing some of these demos with these third party applications, making sure they work well for the business processes, which means you need to understand your business well, and then you can make recommendations. So you might review two or three different companies that, uh, do Cisco connectors or telephony connectors. And once you've reviewed those, you can bring those to your managers and say, here's the pricing, here's about what they cost, here's what we should expect, here's the functionality they have. Now let's make a decision about what works best for our company. So go ahead and gather the requirements from the team. Understand what your team is expecting that this tool is going to do for them. Then you can bring those requirements to the third party vendors and schedule demos and let them show you how it works and how it solves your requirements. And then you can go on informing your management teams or the interested parties on exactly what it does, what the pros and cons of each tool are, and what your recommendation is going forward. So here's another request. It says, hi, Brad. Before I enter the new hire class starting on Monday, I wanted to check in with you on my timing. Do you add them in and then I, okay, so this is uh, uh, to give you some understanding. Number one, check out the sub subject. It's a Hoopla edition. So Hoopla is a gamification tool that when somebody makes a sell, it does this big like, hoorah, we made a sell, congratulations. And it notifies like everyone in the company or whoever's interested in being notified. And uh, it just brings that, that culture of celebrating each other to uh, the Salesforce platform. So it integrates with Salesforce. It knows when an opportunity is closed. It knows when something great has been done and it sends out these alerts. It also has a uh, sort of a stream you can watch where 
Uh, you can see who's got the most sales and they have like race cars and stuff that show you like, oh, whoever's in the lead and but somebody else is right behind them. Um, so anyway, it's just a gamified way of being interested in how many sales, maybe compete a little, um, join teams together and compete against each other, things like that. So we've got some new hires coming in and this person is supposed to be the Hoopla administrator and they're saying, hey, I just wanted to check, do I add these people's pictures and their anniversaries and birthdays or should I send them to you and then you can add them or, or something else? Like I messed something up last time and I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do. So once again, this is not necessarily a Salesforce question, but it's a Salesforce third party app and you end up sort of being on the hook for troubleshooting these apps that really have, you're never gonna find this on Trailhead, let me assure you. And you're likely not gonna fi find it on any Trailblazer communities. And so this is where you're really needing to work with the support teams um, of these third-party vendors and read their documentation to better understand it. So again, understand the request, understand what happened last time where they felt like it went wrong. Then you're gonna need to learn best practice. So that probably means reviewing some of their documentation and then getting support. So you'll have to get uh, support to make sure you understand what's going on there. Now, here's another one. Please update the dialer to the phone number listed below. So um, in this situation, uh, there is a what's called a power dialer or an auto dialer in Salesforce. And what it does is you can take a list of phone numbers and automatically dial through them. So say you have a report of 100 phone numbers. Well, a power dialer, like dial source in this instance, uh, can actually dial through those numbers one by one. And you just put on your headset and it dials and you hear it ring. And then uh, if they answer, you talk to them. And if they don't, you leave a voicemail and then you keep going. And you can streamline it even better than that. But that's pretty much what it does. And then when you hang up the phone, it automatically goes ahead and dials the next number. So they want me to update the phone number, basically the caller ID for where this is coming from. So once again, we have to go into our settings. We have to make sure we understand uh, what is needed uh, make sure we're not breaking anything and then update that. And sometimes it does require, at least the first couple of times, maybe getting in touch with the power dialer support and making sure that you understand what you're doing. Now, the thing is, this is something that happens to come up probably once a week for some of my clients. It's like, hey, we need to keep that caller ID number refreshed and make sure that it's a number that people, you know, uh, like it or like it or hate it. Um, maybe it's a number people don't recognize. So maybe we called them last week and they now they know our number. So let's uh, let's put a new number in there and then we'll call them again and maybe they'll pick up. So it's, you know, strategies like that. Um, and But when you see some of these repetitive tasks, it's sometimes nice to go ahead and train someone else to do some of these things. So you can focus on the real Salesforce initiatives and they can focus on some of these ancillary, hey, update the phone number again, update the phone number again, that kind of stuff. All right, so let's look at another example. So this is actually an e-signature generator. This one's called HelloSign. You do have others called uh, like DocuSign or Sign Now. There's a lot of different ones. Um, this one is HelloSign, I believe. So I was attempting to update uh, a particular template through Salesforce and I got an error. It appeared once I clicked on preview document at the top right. I never received something like this before. Any idea what's causing it? Also, I need to add a little something onto one of the templates. How do I do that? Uh, this is for this particular person, by the way, or account. Um, can you help? So it's just another example of things that, again, you're never going to learn on Trailhead. But what you would do here is you need to, you know, uh, number one, understand the request. And it's like, okay, well, you're getting some kind of error, unclaimed draft, create embedded with template. Like, I have no idea what that error means. So I'm probably going to go straight to support with the issue. And then I'm going to go to try to log in as this person and reproduce the issue, figure out what's going on there and try to understand how these tools work. And maybe I need to, you know, see if this is happening with other templates. Is it just this template? Maybe I go into the template settings and see kind of what's going on there. And then hopefully support will get back to me quickly and we can get this resolved. Um, but again, it goes back to supporting your users. So a lot of people are apprehensive and they go, hey, I'm not, I don't support HelloSign. Like you can't ask me for that. You need to go talk to somebody else. Like, just understand that your job, yes, it's a Salesforce professional, but also your job is to help the people working at the company to be able to do their jobs effectively. And maybe you do have to support them with a tool that's not necessarily Salesforce every now and then, because guess what? They use that tool when they're in Salesforce, so they see it as a Salesforce issue, and you just need to be ready to help and open-minded to, to help them improve their day. It's not their fault either. So reach out to support, do what you can, 
and see if you can get these issues resolved. All right, so we're gonna look at one last one here. So uh, I started the process, this is from a user, uh, talking about Calendly. And if you're not aware, Calendly is sort of this tool where you can set your schedule and a calendar behind the scenes, and then they click a link and it automatically lets them one set of time. So for instance, say uh, you wanted to call me. You said, hey, Brad, I love your YouTube video and I wanna give you a call and, and discuss some things. And I would say, oh, okay, well, here's my Calendly link. And you would click that, select the time, hit save, and then it would send me an invite and you an invite, plus a link in there for us to connect on a Zoom call or whatever it would be, and we can get started. So an amazing tool. So uh, this person's reaching out and saying, hey, I started a process to integrate Calendly into Salesforce, but apparently I don't have a credentials to install it. Like, thank God, right? Like, let's all just take a moment to say, it's great that we have profiles and permission sets that control the security that people have because this person literally would have installed an app into Salesforce without asking anyone if they could have. So it's great that we have security in Salesforce. So is this something you can assist with? I'll give you my credentials for Calendly. Are you able to go through the process? So you can see how this doesn't make a lot of sense, right? Like, do we wanna use Calendly? Is that something that we've even got approval to do. And if we integrate Calendly with Salesforce, we're probably not gonna do it under your personal Calendly link. We'll buy a business version of Calendly so that everyone can have a Calendly link and we'll integrate that with Salesforce, not your personal account. But people don't understand, you know, sort of the higher level architecture of Salesforce and how the business operates and things like that. But they have given you some information on what to do. So what we're doing here is number one, again, let's confirm the needs of the business. Let's see if there are other options better than Calendly that maybe work better with Salesforce. And maybe we check and see, you know, are there some others on the app exchange? Can we Google and find some versions that maybe work really well with Salesforce, but aren't necessarily on the app exchange? And then again, going back to, let's understand the requirements. What do you want this tool to do? To, is it just for setting Calendly invites or calendar invites? Or is there more that we would like for this tool to do? And we should probably check out what all of our options are. And then again, you've got those requirements. Now you can go to the third party vendors like Calendly and get some demos and make sure it's gonna work for you, get the pricing, see how it's gonna work for the business and fit into the budget. And now you can make an informed decision and let your management team know what you recommend to solve these types of problems. So all of this to say, there are Again, thousands of third-party apps that you need to be aware of. And it's not that you're gonna know how to use all of them. You'll probably get good at a few that a lot of people use, but for the most part, it's just understanding that you're serving your end users. You're gonna have to look at a lot of sort of administrator guides on these tools and be ready to work with support. Do not be shy about reaching out to support and asking for help to get these things done quickly. Now, the last thing is, of course, as I end all these videos, make sure to subscribe to the channel to show that you support us and get more videos like this. Make sure to share, like, and comment. That just boosts the YouTube algorithm and we get this information out to more and more people who could benefit from this. Hopefully you benefited from it, so let's help other people benefit from it. Share it on LinkedIn, share it on Facebook, uh, share it wherever you like to hang out on social so that other people can benefit too. And then of course, if you're looking to land a Salesforce job but you're not sure how to get started, start with the five-day challenge. We put it all together for you. You can find that at talentstacker.com forward slash Salesforce. And thank you so much for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed the content.